That's okay. Um, just uh, Miss Addy Game present. Yes. Miss Doreen Ojeda here. Mrs. Hara. Yes. Mr. Ibarra here. Miss Sandoval. Don't see Miss Sandoval on. Mr. Flores. We don't see Mr. Flores yet. And Mr. Okay. Fuentes is, uh, will be absent today. That's correct. Okay, thank you, Joanna, and I'm sorry about that. No problem. Moving on to 2.0, our school showcase. I am looking forward to this this evening as are our board members. Item 2.1 is Colton High School. I am very proud to introduce to you Isaiah Duran and Juan Barone. Good evening, Good evening. President Haro, board members, Superintendent Miranda, and members of the audience. I am a senior at Colton High School. My name is Isaiah Duran, and I am the ASP president. I am accompanied by one of our freshmen, Juan Boron, who is a freshman class vice president, and we are here to present the Colton High School Showcase. So far this year, we have recognized students who have excelled in their AP courses, awarding 151 students for passing their AP test with a three or higher. Among, we have 12 AP scholars, two AP scholars with honor, and one AP scholar with distinction. What this means is that if you are an AP scholar, you have passed AP tests with a three or higher. If you are an AP scholar with honor, you have passed four AP tests with three or higher. And if you are an AP scholar with distinction, you have passed five AP tests with three or higher. Linker has also conducted freshman follow-ups, which allows freshmen to be familiar with their classes and work together. Freshmen find this very important to build relationships with their seniors and interact with others. On September 10th, Link Crew hosted a virtual synergy. And one takeaway moment was when people shared their balloon story, which allowed them to express a difficult moment in their lives and share how they released their stress, represented by a release of air from the balloon. September 23rd, Bloomington High School and Colton High School joined together for a Link Crew Synergy Day, which allowed us to share our synergy, how our synergy was ran and allowed Bloomington High School to become familiar with the program and develop some similar ideas. For the months of August and September, 34 students were recognized for the Student of the Month Award for their academic excellence in the online learning system. Renaissance hosted their award pickup on several days, recognizing 623 awards for the second semester of the 2019-2020 school year. Students recognized for these awards had a safe process to get their awards. They would drive to the school wearing a mask, their awards, take a picture only removing their masks when necessary, and finally put their mask back on going back to their car immediately. It was a Monsters, Think it was a Monsters Inc. theme with a cardboard cutout of our very own, Mrs. Murphy. And here you can see some of the pictures taken at the Monsters, Inc. Renaissance uh, Virtual Award Pickup Day. For our athletics programs, we were awarded a varsity letter and a certificate for those who played varsity sports previous year and were able to take a picture with our Monsters Inc. themed background. During club rest, we were able to meet with their student athletes and I found this very important because students were still able to communicate with the coaches and develop plans for when we resume. One activity that took place so far that I found really meaningful was the senior sunrise because I was still able to kick off my senior year, although in a virtual platform. And the way this took place was I would take a picture of myself with the sunrise and share it through social media. The virtual welcome back rally was a showcase of videos and pictures that premiered on August 28th of 2020, of, such, of since has which received over 1000 views. This rally was a compilation of different challenges, videos, and pictures submitted by our students encouraging school spirit. The Welcome Back Virtual Spirit Week was a way to get students involved showing their school pride. 
Three days that stuck out to us were Hobbies Day, Mask Day, and Pet Day. Hobbies Day was a day where students got to show their passions from the safety of their homes. We found that Mask Day and Pet Day were very important to this Spirit Week as they showed concern, student concern and support for public health and showed that we were able to take advantage of our current situation. And here are some pictures that were featured in our virtual Welcome Back Rally. CHS also had a virtual back to school night, which allowed parents, students, teachers, and reassuring parents that this year was thoroughly planned showed available communication options. Virtual week was a week dedicated to getting students involved in clubs of their passions and sports as well. I joined the AP Honors and Biology Club as it allowed me to be aided in my academic pursuits and have a club of which encouraged my passion in biology. For the months of August and September, students were able to select a staff member that they were deserving of a reward. All students had all students had to do was fill out a short survey. A total of eleven staff members were awarded and over seventy nominated for the staff of the month. Renaissance also distributed birthday cards for the months of July and August and September for both students and staff. And this was really assuring that this year will be a great one. Hosted each month, student forums were held for students to voice their concerns about online learning. This was able to help students as not only this told them that they were being heard, but this also told them that staff members were listening to us and they were ready to make changes in a respectful and courteous manner. The very next day, pastry with the principal was held. And similarly, similarly to the student forums, were able to share their concerns with staff. The software has also put together a video of pictures of themselves and their peers up a sign on one side saying sophomore class or class of 2023. And on the other side, they have written their goals for the future or what they plan to accomplish. In honor of National Hispanic Heritage Month, we have decided to dedicate the week of October 5th to the 9th to the celebration of the Hispanic culture and their tra traditions. On October 6th, the Senior Informational Night and Senior Virtual Award Ceremony will be held. The Senior Informational Night will be a review of the senior contract and senior activities. Counselors will also have the opportunity to talk about how they can assist with applying to colleges and planning for after graduation. Going back to the award pickup, students were uh, students recognized for the second semester of the 2019-2020 school year will be included in the virtual award ceremony video slideshow. Even if someone wasn't able to make it, their names will still be displayed with the name of their award on the 6th, 7th, and 8th, depending on their grade, for their outstanding achievement. On October 9th, 2020, the freshman class will be hosting their very own virtual game night. This will allow us to have the freshmen meet those in our leadership positions and help us grow to be, to be better leaders through bonds with our classmates. This will also help in making a comfortable campus for all of these students. On October 26th, we will be hosting a Halloween virtual and this will allow students to share their Halloween costumes and traditions. In November, we have decided to host our Spirit Week on the week of the 16th through the 20th with the theme of thanks. We also want to, to give those in need support through White Ribbon Wednesday, a day where we wear white in support of lung cancer awareness, and Food Drive Friday, where we donate, where we donate to the food drive to those in need. On November 16th, 18th, and 20th, ASP will be hosting drop-off days for our annual food drive. And this really goes hand-in-hand -hand with the Virtual Spirit Week of 
from the 16th to the 20th leading up to our Thanksgiving week. In December, Link Crew will also be hosting a Coco and Cram study session with freshmen. This gives freshmen another opportunity to interact with their freshmen, with the seniors and freshmen, and they'll also be able to get help they need in school and whatever else they may have troubles with. Thank you for your time and enjoy your evening. Do any of the board members have any questions or comments? I do. This is how I'm going to hit up. Go ahead, John. <clears throat> Thank you so much um, for the presentation. I must say one of the most rewarding parts about being a board member is having students come to the board meetings or us being able to go out to the schools to see students. This was a wonderful presentation, but I really miss seeing the kids and the young people in uh, person, and hopefully we'll be able to do that in the future. I applaud your presentation. You did such a nice job. It's interesting the changes that <clears throat> we see in these presentations compared to when in person. Um, are probably parallel to those that they have with the instructional piece as well, but they did a really nice job. I was very pleased to see that we had 151 kids passing AP tests. That's uh, quite an accomplishment on the part of uh, your boys and girls. Um, it was interesting to see the supports that you have in place for kids, uh, especially now during this COVID. So uh, your leadership team is doing an amazing job and I'm very proud that uh, we have students and, and leadership within your schools and the staff who provides your assistance uh, that we do. So. Be safe out there. Thank you so much. And I hope maybe in the spring we'll be able to see you come back and in person. But you did a right, really nice job. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Any other Thank comments? You. I would like oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mystery uh Mystery Bar and then Ms. Adegin. Okay, thank you very much. Uh well, I want to commend the students for doing an excellent job. Uh it, it's incredible to see the the creativity and, and uh, the ability and skill that these students have in providing a, a full acti activity schedule for all our students. All the, the programming and everything that you're offering is these probably excellent uh, to keep all our students at Cone High School engaged. So I just wanna take my hat off to you uh, to your your uh, ASB teacher as well, and our principal Joda Murphy. Um, the information that you share with us, and I agree with uh, with Joanne, is the fact that we would love to be uh, part of everything that you're you're uh, you're doing. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, this uh, pandemic does not allow us to do it at this time. But I look forward to. Uh, coming down the way in the next hopefully few months from now so once again just want to take my hat off to all of you students for an excellent job keeping all our students engaged re reminding them that part of cone high school wow. and and this proud tradition that it is always historically have provided for all our students so thank you very much thank you mr ibarra uh miss aragin yes thank you uh, Isaiah and Juan, uh, thank you for the presentation. You did an awesome job. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Ibarra mentioned some some qualities. He's, you know, he said creativity, ability, skills that you've shown that you've demonstrated. I want to add to that. I want to say resilient. You've been you've shown shown resilience, determination. You have shown uh, tenacity, and. Um, you know, and bottom line is you're showing your your true yellow jacket spirit. Nothing is going to put you down. Nothing is going to let you put you uh, put you down, and you're going to move forward. Uh, it's a good way to start your school year as with the senior sunrise. I think uh, that was uh, very very special. Um, I miss a lot of things, and like my my fellow board members, I miss seeing you in person. But you know, we're making the best of the situation. 
and I think you as as uh, young adults are making the best of, of this situation. Uh, congratulations on your AP numbers. That's really impressive. And thank you so much for giving us a glimpse of what is coming up. Uh, we always like to know what's going on and we, we'd like to participate as much as we can. Um, I just want to remind you that, that you, Isaiah, and you, Juan, uh, along with your other, the leaders of your school, you are the voice of your student body. And uh, please continue to be the ears uh, and, and the eyes of your fellow students. Keep, you know, watch out for them. Um, this is, has been difficult on a lot of, a lot of your uh, fellow students. So um, be, be good listeners and, and uh, communicate with us, with the adults in your school, with the, with the board members, with, the, with Dr. Miranda. If you do have concerns and, or if you do sense frustrations uh, among your fellow students, we're here to support you in any way that we can. Um, you know, I'm, we're very, very proud of the determination that you're showing and your, and your, um, your true spirit in these difficult times. So uh, we, we always, always encourage you to communicate and uh, let us know how we can best uh, be supportive and, and if we can make things easier for you, that's why we're here. So again, thank you, Isaiah and Juan. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Ms. Aragin. Any other comments? Um, I wanna just make a real quick comment. Um, Isaiah and Juan, thank you very much for your presentation. It was so professional. And I wanna also congratulate Colton High School on the AP um, testing, that was wonderful to see that many students who passed and those with honors. So congratulations. I know it's a lot of hard work, but it is well worth it. Um, your award ceremony, what a wonderful idea for students to get recognized. I especially uh, liked the a backdrop and the cardboard cutout of Ms. Murphy. What, I mean, you know, this has been a difficult time on, for all of us, but especially you students. And to see the creativity that's coming out from our students in trying to make school as normal as possible is amazing. Um, mask day, I mean, okay, you know, I know there's all kinds of spirit days out there, but everyone's showing their masks. I mean, like I said, the creativity is great. So I just wanna thank you for your presentation and, uh, and thank you, uh, Mrs. Murphy, for all she's doing to keep uh, school as normal as possible during this time. And thank you and stay safe. And with that, we're gonna move on to 3.0, our special presentations. And this evening we have 3.1. I look forward to this all the time as well. Uh, besides our school showcases, our employee recognition. Ms. Harrell, if we could pause here to switch our uh, sign language interpreters, please. Yes, of course. Thank you. I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I just wanted to give a shout out uh, to Ms. Buzker, who is our the Colton High School ASB director um, and Renaissance advisor that would be possible without her. So I want to make sure she gets recognized for her accomplishments. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Almost ready. Okay, we're all set. Thank you. Um, Director Carlton. Hi, good evening. Good evening, Board President Haro, Board members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the public. The Human Resources Division is honored to congratulate our September Employees of the Month. To be noticed and nominated among our thousands of dedicated employees speaks volumes to the level of impact they have made on others. All of our nominees and award winners show compassion, motivation, inspiration, and commitment to making our district the best it can be. The winners' names and accomplishments have already been shared virtually, as you can see on the screen. 
it has been shared with the Colton employees and with the board. It's already been viewed over 4,000 times. Tonight, we would like to publicly reshare the names of our winners. For September, our classified employee of the month is the entire Nutritional Services Department. They were nominated by Ingrid Musterman. The Certificated Employee of the Month, Christina Cabrera, Speech Language Pathologist at PPS, and she was nominated by the SLP team. The Management Employee of the Month was Elizabeth Jones, Assistant Principal at Colton Middle School. She was nominated by Veronica Rivera. The Education Partner of the Month was Andrew Burdick. He is an employee at Inland Regional Center and was nominated by Lisa Lennox. We offer a heartfelt congratulations to all of the winners and encourage our CJUSD staff to continue to acknowledge and nominate more of our outstanding employees in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director Carlton. Moving on to 4.0, our public comment. Joanne, do we have public comment this evening? Yes, we do, Ms. Harrell. Public comment number one, Georgette Viverell Dollitz, special education teacher. Dear members of our board, I urge you to help our families by providing real solutions to the barriers that are preventing many of our students from attending school on a daily basis in this distance learning model. This is a problem that is likely to continue into the hybrid model as students will still be expected to attend school virtually three to five days each week. Currently, undue stress and unrealistic expectations are being placed on teachers to be, to be responsible for our students' re-engagement and attendance. This is not a problem that can be solved so, solely with teachers' creativity, tenacity, and big hearts. Solutions from the district have not been particularly thoughtful or supportive, resulting in responsibilities being deferred or passed on to other teachers. People award and incentive programs seem adequate at best and an added level of inequality to our most vulnerable students at worst. Overall, stress is building, tension mounting, and our neediest students still not attending. Our teachers need to be allowed to focus on educating our students, not overburdened with endless hours of paperwork and phone calls. Our students deserve to have the resources available to fully participate in the quali quality engaging education teachers are spending countless hours creating. Our families feel, need to feel supported. Many of our families who are not attending and participating regularly are citing a lack of reliable internet connection and broadband with as a problem. We offer feeble hotspots and parking lot Wi-Fi while they are supposed to go to work outside the home and monitor student performance inside it. No wonder they feel so alienated from the process. These are hard times and finding strong solutions is tough. However, adding undue burden on teachers to serve as attendance officers is not a good solution in any case. We need our district to provide reliable solutions for our families. Sincerely, Georgette Birrell Dollins, special education teacher. Public comment number two, Yaneth Murillo, CJUSD parent. I attended the LSS Dual Immersion Parent Network meeting on September 22nd. During the segment for parent input, I expressed how much I would like to have access to physical books in English. I asked that when it was possible, could we have access to our school libraries to read with our kids? Children are currently spending many hours in front of monitors and having the opportunity to read and be away from the computer would be great. Mr. Diaz said school libraries will be open once it is safe to do it and encouraged us to continue to work with our students. I understand and respect the decision of keeping our schools closed until it is safe to be back. To my surprise, the following day in the morning, who knocks on my door? Dr. Moore. Dr. Moore came to our house to deliver physical books in English and also in Spanish. Her action made us feel so grateful and very special. A principal took the time to listen and do something based on my request. I want to acknowledge Dr. Moore and how discreetly she goes about making sure our students are taken care of. My daughter Union is in, du is in dual immersion at Grand Elementary. I have to say I am so pleased with Dr. Moore's leadership and with the creativity of dual immersion to teachers who are being so creative and caring to engage our students daily. My recognition to their hard work and dedication. Signed by Yaneth Murillo, CJUSD parent. Thank you. 
Public comment number three, Lisa Villa, parent. Hello, good afternoon, Board of Education and Dr. Miranda. My name is Lisa Villa. I am a parent and grandparent of many students within the Colton School District. I have had quite a few children who proudly graduate from Colton High School already. I have many topics of concern within the Colton School District. The first topic is office support at all the school sites and district offices. How can students be successful if there is such limited access to get answers answered from parents as well as students or to get supplies needed for distance learning? If the concern is staff safety, why can't one person be available at each of the offices at all our sites and the district office to offer support every day of the week? Every site is run on different hours, protocols, or whatever each administration feels safe to do so. It should be the same across the board at every site, especially the district office. One person for every office site, every department within the district office should be available to support our communities and not limited hours. If my community already felt unsupported before the pandemic, you can be assured that feeling has only been enhanced. Our students are failing and falling behind. If you call each site, they will each have a different recording, everyone running their own show. Some recordings even say, due to limited access to our emails and voicemails, we may be unable to get back to you. How is our limited access? Aren't people who aren't physically at a site being required to work from home? Isn't the goal of our district student success? How can there be student success if there is such a limited support? Some parents work Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And even then, not all sites are remaining open a full day. It's limited hours, and it's the hours each administration has designated for that day. One solution to fix this is to alternate one staff to cover each office at each site so we can adhere to social distancing rules. Someone can remain at each of the offices for student and parent support. Is student success a priority within the Colton District? Thank you for your time. Respectfully, Lisa Villa, a concerned parent. And that concludes public comment. Thank you, Joanne, for reading our public comments this evening. Board President, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Flores and Ms. Uh, Sandoval are, are here. Okay, thank you. President. We are moving on to 5.0, our action items 5.1 through 5.29. We need to pull action items 5.5, 5.22, and 5.23 for separate consideration. Are there any others that a board member would like to have pulled? Okay, seeing none. Do I have a motion to approve action items 5.1 through 5.4, 5.6 through 5.21, 5.24 through 5.29. So moved, this is Dan Flores. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Do I second. have a second? Second, Adegin. Thank you, Ms. Adegin. I have a motion by Board Member Flores and a second by Board Member Adegin to approve action items 5.1 through 5.4, 5.6 through 5.21, and 5.24 through 5.29. Are there any questions or comments on any of these items before we vote? Seeing none, Joanne, would you like to do a roll call vote? Sure. Mr. Ibarra? Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Adigui? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. 
On a motion by board member Flores and a second by board member Araguin and carried on a 6-0 vote, the board approved action items 5.1 through 5.4, 5.6, to 5.21, 5 5.24 to 5.29. Action item 5.5, the approval of contract between the Colton Joint Unified School District and the Interim Assistant Superintendent of Student Services. Term. Uh, Interim S Assistant Superintendent of Student Services, Melissa Kingston. The term is September 17th, 2020, and continuing until the Assistant Ass Superintendent position is filled unless terminated sooner. Annual salary, $176,063. Annual work year, 223 days. Vehicle, district provided vehicle for assistant superintendent's use. Fringe benefits, health insurance, the same medical and dental insurance benefits offered to her in her director position. Sick leave, shall earn the same sick leave provided to her in her director position. And retiree health benefits shall be the same as provided to her in her director position. Do I have a motion? to approve the contract between the Colton Joint Unified School District and the Interim Assistant Superintendent of Student Services. I'll make the motion to approve. Okay. Against the Okay. And Joanne, do I have to read the terms again after I? No, you do not, Ms. Hara. Okay, thank you. I was like, okay. On a motion, uh, I have a motion by board member Araguin and seconded by board member Sandoval to approve the contract between the Colton Joint Unified School District and the Interim Assistant Superintendent of Student Services Division. Roll call vote, please. Ms. Araguin? Ms. Sandoval? Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Thank you. Hello? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Dorino Hader? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Thank you. On a motion by board member Araguin and seconded by board member Sandoval and on a 6-0 vote, the board approved the contract between the Colton Joint Unified School District and the Interim Assistant Superintendent of Student Services Division. Moving on to action item 5.22. The adoption of resolution number 21-11, authorizing the issuance of the Colton Joint Unified School District, San Bernardino and Riverside Counties, California, election of the 2008 General Obligation Bonds Series E's and action related thereto. Do I have a motion? So moved, Flores. And a second. Oh, I a second. Okay. And Mr. Jensen and Mr. Williams. Thank you, President Haro. Um, last uh, time we met as a board during the special board meeting for facilities, we uh, presented some information regarding the resolution for Series E. This evening, we have with us uh, Michael Williams, again, our, our financial advisor, to give us some updated information on the Series E bond for, as far as the sizing of that bond will go and some other uh, related information uh, that will be pertinent to the board. And uh, staff recommends that the board approve these resolutions this evening. 
And now I'll turn the time over to uh, Mike Williams. Oh, good evening, board members. Uh, Miranda. Uh, Miranda. Um, yeah, I have um, uh, good news uh, this evening. Uh, after uh, updating our numbers, uh, we're estimating that the amount of proceeds for projects will be in the neighborhood of $14.8 million. So um, we're going to be you know, in the market uh, selling the bonds in uh, approximately uh, 10 days to two weeks, and we're uh, hoping for a favorable outcome. So that's the good news that I have for you tonight. Uh, there's no other updated information uh, or no other required disclosure for this evening. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mike. And I'll turn it back over to President Haro for the vote. Thank you. Does the board have any questions or comments on on action item four point two two? I have a quick question, uh, Board President Haro. This is this is Dean Flores. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jensen, real quick, just with respect to what Mr. Williams shared with, with what sounds like a very healthy projected revenue uh, source for this uh, bond issuance, where does that put us? I apologize, that on my notes in front of me from our discussion from the special meeting. Where does that put us with respect to what we were hoping for to meet most, if not all, the uh, projects that we were we had budgeted or we were looking at trying to budget? I think that puts us close to our goal, does it not? It gets us about $1.5 million closer than what we reported to you last week. Great, okay. So we're, we're, we'll still, again, as usual, not be able to do everything that we need or want to do, but it puts us much closer. Okay, that helps, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none. I have a motion by board member Flores and a second by board member Thoring Ojeda to approve action item 4.22 as presented. Joanne, you want to do a roll call vote, please? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Adige? Yes. Thank you. On a motion by board member Flores and a second by board member Thoring Ojeda, the board approved action item on a Action item 5.22 on a 6 0 vote as presented. Moving on to action item 5.23, the adoption of resolution number 21 14, authorizing the issuance of the Colton Joint Unified School District, San Bernardino and Riverside Counties, California, 2020 general ob obligation refunding bond. Do I have a motion to approve. Sorry, Lojeda. Okay, do I have a second? Second, uh, Flores. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Mr. Jensen and Mr. Williams. Uh, thank you, President Haro. I believe for the refunding bonds, uh, there is no more uh, new information to present to the board. Uh, you may proceed with the roll call vote. Okay, thank you. I have a motion by board member Thoring Ojeda and a second by board member Flores to approve action item 5.23 as presented. Roll call vote, Ms. Joanne, please. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Adley? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. On a motion by board member Thoring Ojeda and a second by board member Flores and on a 6-0 vote, the board approved action item 5.23. Thank you very much. Moving on to 6.0, our administrative reports. 6.1, approved disbursements. Are there any questions or comments by any of board members? Okay. 
Item 6.2, approved change order for the Colton Middle School Cafeteria Multipurpose Room Project per board resolution number 20-57. Any questions or comments regarding 6.2? Seeing none, moving on to item 6.3, approved change order for the Colton High School Cafeteria Multipurpose Room Project per board resolution number 20-57. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, moving on to 6.4, our facilities update. Director Chang. Good evening, Board President Horo, Board Member Superintendent Armadares, um, members of the public. Uh, tonight, I'd just like to provide a board a quick update some of our ongoing uh, projects. Uh, next slide, please. So first up is the Colton Middle School NPR modernization. This is one of the board priority projects and uh, we're getting close to the finish line. The project is substantially complete with some miscellaneous uh, outstanding items and that uh, we were working on with the contractor and then followed by the health, health department uh, approval and sign off. So the left photo shows the modernized dining area with the acoustic ceiling walls, uh, ceiling panels, some new LED lights, as well as new uh, concrete stained flooring. Wow. And to the right are just some of the uh, kitchen area with uh, sparkling new stainless steel uh, kitchen equipment that we're excited to turn over to the nutrition services, uh, as well as brand new uh, walk-in uh, refrigerator, freezers, and big compartment sink. Um, so we're, we're happy to uh, that this project is coming to a conclusion within the next few weeks, and uh, we're gonna turn it back to the, the school, so, uh, and, and as well as nutrition services. So we're excited uh, on the progress. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just some updated progress photos for the Colton High School baseball softball stadium. Contracts is finishing up on the uh, some of the dugouts as well as adjusting irrigation coverage. Uh, on the upper left-hand corner, you see some new aluminum bleachers were currently uh, erected. Uh, we are experiencing uh, some emergence of nutgrass, which is a very uh, stubborn type of weed in our area. So we're working on trying to apply additional treatments to eradicate this problem. And we want to make sure everything is addressed if we, we uh, start laying down sod. So these are just some progress photos with setting uh, bases, uh, some uh, amenities like the bottle filling station and dugouts. And uh, so we're hoping to finish, finish this project in, uh, in a few weeks. Uh, next slide, please. Next up is the Colton High School new uh, NPR building. So these are some progress photos as well. On the le upper left-hand uh, corner is the exterior uh, enclosure. The, uh, the contractor is still continuing to finish the exterior metal stud framing. You can see they're starting to put some exterior substrate uh, right now uh, ongoing. At the bottom left, there's some exterior concrete paving that the contractor started as well. And on the right-hand side, is the uh, progress photo showing the interior uh, metal stud erection that's ongoing. So uh, the contractor, as you recall, we have some various delays due to COVID. Uh, there's also a shortage of concrete. So we're doing uh, continued work with contract, do what we can to uh, recapture some of the time loss. Uh, next slide, please. Excuse me, can we switch interpreters, please? We're all set. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So next project is the Terrace Hill Middle School parking uh, expansion. So that project is is on schedule and on budget. So the uh, we're making good progress. The uh, contract actually poured uh, all the asphalt uh, last week uh, and also this week. And uh, so we have some miscellaneous items to finish up. So we should uh, hopefully wrap up this project and. Uh, and turn it back to the school site in about uh, two weeks. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so, um, so Washington, this is the Washington Tenant Improvement for PPS and Student Services. So we're getting down to the, uh, the home stretch as well. Uh, the building is substantially uh, complete. 
Uh, these are just some of the progress photo. The furniture uh, is uh, currently uh, actually has been installed. And uh, we're also working on just getting all the building systems set up, all the HVAC programming, and working with IT on getting the network set up and running, and uh, kind of getting our, our eyes to IT's cross to, in, to prepare uh, for the staff to relocate in this new uh, facility. You can see upper left hand corner, just got a little before photo at the beginning of demolition, quite a bit of a transformation. Uh, so, again, we're excited to give a um, a great, uh, nice environment uh, for the staff uh, to work in. So, uh, next slide. All right. Again, so just a quick update on the energy management front. Uh, Shane, if you could hit Ender, please. Okay. So, one thing we're working on, we're you know, one thing that that we continue to look at is looking at our utility expenditures. Uh, Southern California Edison rate. They've uh, come out with a, a different rate. Recently, so one of the things our energy manager did was to have them assess, do a analysis to see if there's any potential savings. And uh, so we have about 16 school sites that are being serviced by Southern California Edison. So based on their analysis, that there's some uh, savings, estimated savings about $2,300 uh, by switching uh, with our Harris and DRC to a different rate. It's not huge money, but you know we're we're watching every dollar. You know every dollar save is additional dollar that we can uh, put into the classroom. So we're continue to be diligent in trying to capture whatever savings we're able to to capture. Uh, next, please. All right. Uh, another one is is also Colton Middle School NPR building. You know we've installed some LED lighting and for that project as well. So again, we're trying to uh, leverage whatever you know investment that we have and trying to. Uh, obtain some uh, seek out any rebates and refunding. So we're getting uh, just got approved about twelve hundred dollars of lighting rebate for the Colton uh, Middle School NPR building as well. All right, next, please. Okay. All right. Lastly, it's just uh, something a little bit of good news I want to share. You know, Jay Kim, our energy manager, again, he's really uh, diligent in in and uh, in doing his job. I think Dr. Miranda and I will when we hired him. I think. Uh, if you recall, one of the things we told them that is you know, you have to pay for your your uh, salary, the savings. So again, you know, he continues to to do so, and you can see recently uh, he been he's been doing some audit uh, of the utility bills for about nine campuses in the city of Colton, and he was uh, able to identify about twenty eight thousand dollars of overbilling from uh, March through May of two thousand twenty. So he has several meetings with the city of Colton. They went out and did some site visits and, and, and analysis, and they did acknowledge that there was overbilling and they uh, promptly credit back that amount back to uh, the district. So again, kudos uh, to, to Jay Kim. And this concludes my update. And if you have any questions? Any co questions or comments for Mr. Chang? I, I just have a comment. Um, I just thank you very much, Owen, for the presentation. You, you and your department are doing amazing, amazing things. So um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> this is Mrs. Authority Ojeda. Yes. Oh, and I just want to say thank you for all the hard work your department is continually puts out. Um, I know all of our departments are working hard, but. <clears throat> When I see a school down the street from me go from no parking to this huge, wonderful parking lot in such a short amount of time with it looks like it's everything falling into place exactly as it's supposed to. It's amazing what I see and the kind of work and the quality that we get. We're very fortunate to have you and for our energy manager. Um, thank you so much for to him for all the savings that he's able to see that, you know, unless you really do an audit of it uh, and, and go to the people in charge, you probably would have never regained that kind of money. So I just appreciate the kind of the quality of, of work that we're getting from you in your department. So thank you so much. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I too, I just, I want to just say that um, I have not been out much with this COVID. However, um, I was out putting signs out and I was up in Grand Terrace and uh, was able to see what Ms. Thoring Ojeda is talking about. 
I was so amazed looking at that parking lot. I mean, I know it's just a parking lot, but to the teachers and the parents over at Terrace Hills, when we do get back to school, that is just going to be amazing. It's because that school needed it desperately. So I too wanted to say thank you uh, after seeing that in person. That was great. And also to Mr. Kim, um, I just I I had, I know it was a joke that he had to pay for his salary, and he and he and he he has just done such a phenomenal job. And please let him know how much the board appreciates. And like you said, you know, uh, the two thousand dollars here, there, thousand dollars. We need to save every dollar we can, and put it back in students' education and in not on light bulbs. So whatever it is, wherever we can save those dollars, then that's what we need to do. So thank him from us. All right. We'll do. Thank, thank you, you for, for your presentation. presentation. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Moving on to 6.5, our budget update. <laughs> Mr. Jensen, you're on again. Well, thank you, President Haro. Good evening, members of the board. Superintendent Miranda, Executive Cabinet, our staff and faculty, faculty, faculty sorry, and our uh, honored guests who are online. This evening, I wish to talk about the new metrics for COVID-19 that state has uh, published and our plan to bring back staff and teachers in a safe and orderly fashion. Next slide, please. On August 28th, the state revised its four stage plan to reopen the economy with the blueprint for a safer economy. Uh, Shane, please open up the link at the bottom. There we go, perfect. On this page, you're able to type in the school district and see its uh, metrics when it comes to this uh, new format it's using. So uh, this blueprint uses a four tiered color system to represent the extent of COVID-19 infections in the county with purple for widespread, red for substantial, orange for moderate and yellow for minimal. To move from purple to red, a county must show for two weeks their new cases per 100,000 residents are below seven and the positivity rate for all COVID-19 tests given are under 8%. Next slide, please. On September 20, when the county released its metrics for school districts for the week of September 6th through September 12th, the data lags about two weeks behind and maybe more up-to-date information uh, is available than what I'm showing here tonight. But as of 9-6, CJUSD is now down from number one or two in the county to number 14 out of 33 districts. And we're showing excellent progress of about 5.7 new cases per day, which is considered to be in the red tier. However, both metrics, uh, the one for the number of new cases per day and the one for the positivity rate for tests need to be in the red tier for two weeks for the entire county in order to move to red. Uh, not the entire county as far as districts go, but for the county as a whole. <clears throat> the positivity rate is in a different chart by city, which we will show you on a separate slide. Shane, can you click on the first link? Oh, we've got a problem here. So let's try the second link. The first link would have shown you that uh, the district is at 5.7 per 100,000 residents for a number of new cases per day on average. So on this page, we have the dashboard for all the school districts in the county. If you scroll down to on the left and click on Colton, you know, see our dashboard, this is more up to date than what I have. 
because this is for the week of 913 through 919. So due to a little uptick due to the uh, Labor Day festivities that happened, we are now at 12 new cases. We don't expect this to be here for long. And uh, as, as we continue as a community, as a school district, to uh, watch the three W's, wear a mask, watch your distances, and uh, wash your hands, I think we can uh, make this number go back down to where it needs to be. Let's go to the next slide. On this slide, I'm showing data by city served by CJUSD during the same week, started 696 uh, that I showed you on the previous slide. Shane, click on the link at the bottom and scroll to page two. So the numbers on that slide, this is where they come from. And if possible, zoom in a little bit. Because we serve three com main communities, uh, so we'd start at Bloomington, and Bloomington is at 17.3 in the purple, but for the percent positive test, it's 7.76, which is in the red territory. If we go down to Colton, we'll see that both metrics are in the purple for now, but slightly, slightly above where we need to be in order to be in the red section. So we're very close to me making it there. And then Grand Terrace, of course, the, the third one on the list. A little bit closer to where we need to be. We need to be at seven for new cases and 8% for positive uh, tests. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So next we are going to look at the San Bernardino County Department of Public Health COVID-19 dashboard. The web address is shown here for your uh, if you want to uh, access it yourself. They have both a web uh, version for your desktop and one for your uh, mobile device. So Shane, if you could click on the link, we'll go through each of these tabs shown here. So I'll just explain quickly because we won't touch on every slide. You can do that at your, uh, your leisure. But at the bottom of the page, we have the confirmed cases in both summary and detail format the number of deaths in the county resulting from COVID-19, uh, per, uh, percent of testing that's taking place, any outbreaks that occur, hospital census and ICU census, number of available ventilators, and our skilled nursing facility status. The school district tab is the one we just looked at at the prior uh, page. And then California Department of Public Health monitoring information. So the one we wanna focus on tonight is this first one, the summary page. The upper, le uh, upper right hand side, the green bar graph shows the extent of the uh, COVID-19 during the height of the season. So back at the uh, end of June, early July, at its peak, we were at 793 new cases per day on average during that time period, and that's for the entire county. That equates to about 36, uh, per, 36 new cases per 100,000 per day. Now, if we go down to uh, where we were about a month ago on September 7th, we were at 152 on average. And this is the, I'm talking about the white line, which is a, a seven day moving average. Over the past seven days, it was 152, or about 6.9 new cases per 100,000 uh, residents, which puts us in the red territory if that were to stay. Uh, that was the low point. Where we are as of uh, September 25th was 214 new cases for the whole county, or 9.7 per 100,000. So there was a little uptick due to uh, the Labor Day festivities, as I'd mentioned earlier. Okay, the other, uh, the other tab I would like to point to is the testing tab. We go to testing, see on the uh, left-hand side, it tells you the percent positive rate for the county. 
So the county is still slightly above 8% where it needs to be to be in the red area. Okay. So let's uh, get to the next slide, please. Now we're going to talk a little bit about um, our ability to, as a district, move into the red area and bring our teachers back to um, back to the classroom for voluntarily using those classrooms for distance learning. So I reached out to the director of the San Bernardino County Department of Public Health, who's Cor Corwin Porter, about guidance on the metrics for allowing employees back to work. Based on the case rates for COVID-19 in our district, Mr. Porter had no objection for staff to return as long as they follow appropriate COVID-19 protocols which have been distributed in electronic format yesterday in the form of the COVID-19 employee handbook, as well as training on the handbook. Next slide. Now with the previous information in hand, I would now like to present a plan for allowing our teachers back to the classroom for distance learning instruction purposes. And this, of course, this is on a voluntary basis. It's not mandatory. So I'm getting ready to return we had to develop a COVID-19 employee handbook with all the protocols necessary for staff to return. And again, this was distributed yesterday and the training has gone out to uh, all staff. Training on the handbook uh, uh, has a due date of, of uh, October 30th to complete it. Um, returning of MNO staff and site admin to prepare uh, for the coming of teachers back to the classroom. And I think this is important because uh, maintenance and operations need to be on hand to ensure that there's disinfecting going on at the site and the site admin and the office staff are there to support the teachers and the public when they need to come to the offices. Mm -hmm. So we need to have staff there on site uh, five days a week for as long as the teachers are in the classroom. Then we can bring teachers back to the classroom for distance learning on a voluntary basis. The COVID-19 response team has been in place for about a month now, and it is composed of our district nurses, four of them, one for each cohort and one for the uh, district offices to uh, serve as sort of a hotline to report potential exposures and provide directions to staff for uh, possible exposures at the sites and the need to disinfect the facilities if so. We also are uh, putting in place a new improved exposure reporting system. And I wanna give my thanks to Shane Pinnell for spearheading this using a program called LaserFish that uh, allows us to build an automated type system that uh, will allow principals and directors to report a, a potential exposure at the site or in their department. And it goes through the system of being reviewed by nurses, being reviewed by the COVID response team, and then going out to the uh, to be um, disseminated to those who need to uh, have that information. In addition to what we're doing for our teachers returning, we also want to expand nutrition services to eight more sites for a total of 17 sites plus our central kitchen. We also want to provide flexibility for those who can work from home and for those who cannot work from home, now that we're moving to a five day work week, they would have available the uh, Families First Coronavirus Relief Act leave if they're not able to, to uh, work from home. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> the following is a representation of a timeline uh, for returning certain classifications to a five day work week in order to prepare to allow teachers to return to the classroom on a voluntary basis as soon as we feasibly can. Uh, this is subject to change and of course it's fluid. The situation is always changing. But as such, some items may have had to take place prior to sharing this timeline with the board in order to stay on track with this timeline. So I'll go quickly through the timeline. Starting uh, yesterday, we sent out the handbook to staff and a notice to our maintenance and operations staff that they would be returning to a five-day schedule on Monday, uh, October 5th. October 2nd, uh, tomorrow, in fact, we will mail out a hard copy of the same handbook to everybody so they have that in their hand. October 5th, maintenance and operations returns to five-day schedule. <clears throat> October 12th, 
And notice to teachers that they will have a voluntary return to classrooms will be available on October 26th. Nutrition services staff will return to work five days a week after being noticed um, on October 2nd. So they have a 10 day notice to because they will be changing work locations. They need to have that additional notice. Uh, there will be notice to site administrators and office staff that they'll be returning to five days a week uh, as much as they feasibly can given social distances still need to be observed. And the sites will be open to the public from 8 to 12 p.m. And uh, staff will be on hand as long as teachers are on site. And then notice to district office staff that uh, return to, uh, to work according to their individual department plans uh, as we are still in the purple area. <clears throat> Next uh, slide, please. October 19th, uh, district staff can begin returning to work following their plans. Site administrators will be able to be at site to return to their five day site coverage. October 26th would be the date that we anticipate teachers to be able to voluntarily return to classrooms for DL instruction as long as we're able to meet the above timelines. <clears throat> and then, as mentioned earlier, October 30th, the deadline for Hamburg training will be completed by all staff. Uh, some notes to consider that we, we need to provide some notice to allow staff to arrange for childcare, and we understand the, the need for this. Uh, social distances, masks, and hand washing will be uh, mandatory. We need to make sure we do these things in order to, to make sure we are safe at work. And if social distances and offices are not possible, in some cases they're not, we will continue to rotate their schedule so that they can work from home and from the office to be able to conduct business as much as possible in the office. And staff with special circumstances at home, uh, they can work with their supervisor on a work from home schedule. And if they can't work from home again, they can use the, the FFCRA if, if uh, needed. So next slide, please. <clears throat> So uh, thank you for your time, and uh, I'd like to uh, ask if there are any questions this evening on this plan. Oh, Ms. Haro, can you uh, can you hear us? <clears throat> Sorry, Ms. Haro, you were muted. Me, okay. <laughs> I apologize. Um, no. does, does the board have any questions for Mr. Jensen? This is Mrs. Thornlera. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Um, I'm wondering if we could get a copy of that um, paper so that we could look at it to understand it, because I know people are going to be asking me questions and it's easier for me to see it. There's so much information here and I thank you so much. Um, it'll take a little time to go through and truly really understand it for me anyway. Um, but thank you so much. I, this gives us a, a kind of a preview of what's to come. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, I'll make sure everybody gets a copy of the presentation and uh, the uh, the proposed timeline. Okay. Mrs. Harrell, if we could pause here to switch interpreters, please. Yes, of course. Thank you. Ms. Harrell, if I can ask uh, that uh, if uh, the panel's uh, and I should have said this earlier, if you can hit mute on your end, uh, when you're obviously when we're not speaking, um, it's creating some. Oh, I was on mute. No, not you, not you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Except you, Miss Haro, you're, okay. you're, you're fine. No, there was, I think there's a, I, I'm not sure who it, it is, but there's uh, significant feedback and uh, so. Uh, no, I, I heard that too, so. Okay, okay. it was hard, it, it was difficult to hear some of the comments and so. Uh, Anyways, thank you. Thank you. Respect okay. on the interpreters now. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Okay. So going back to Mr. Jensen's presentation, does any board member have any further questions? Wow, I'm surprised. Okay. Um, so my my and, and, and I don't want to assume anything. My question is these timelines. These timelines have are being worked over with our unions. They've already been told these this the same timeline that you gave us, or is this something we have to still uh, we still have not done with? Uh, you are correct. I did go over these timelines with both with both union leadership, 
and that they gave their feedback uh, and they had their opportunity to point out any questions that they had and we answered those questions for them. So what you see tonight is so far what's been reviewed uh, by them and by the executive cabinet. Okay, good. And I'm, I'm really, I know that the board has been uh, asking and asking and asking to have teachers come back who, who want to come back, not being, not everyone, uh, to t do their distance learning teaching from their classroom where they need to be. And, um, and I know it's been a sore spot because we haven't gotten them in there sooner, but um, I like that now we have an actual date with a timeline and also the reasons why we have not been able to do it. We need, we still needed to be safe. So um, I really, really appreciate all the thought that went into this presentation, not just for the board, but for those public and teachers who are out there listening that to know that we are working on it and it, and it's, it, it's coming, it's coming, just hold on and, and um, we're there. So thank you, Mr. Jensen for your presentation. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, President Haro. Okay, moving on to 6.6. .6. We have no ACE update this evening. And item 6.7, we have no CSEA update. Item 6.8, no MAC update. And item 6.9, no ROP update because we have not had a meeting. And moving on to 7.1, our superintendents communicate. Dr. Miranda. Thank you, Ms. Haro and uh, board members. Uh, good evening, uh, cabinet and members uh, out there uh, online who are watching us. Uh, just so, uh, first of all, I just wanna start out and just uh, thank all of you uh, again for your patience. Uh, we're, we're still dealing with uh, challenges uh, with uh, you know the widespread pandemic, uh, the numbers and data starting to look uh, a whole lot better. Uh, as Mr. Jensen uh, spoke about earlier. So I can reassure you again that cabinet, the leadership team with the uh, guidance and direction of our board of education, uh, we have uh, are going slow to go together and to go cautiously to ensure the safety of our, our employees uh, and num paramount number one, our, our students to get to the point. We want, we want them back. Uh, ASAP, uh, and uh, certainly uh, we're working towards that goal. Uh, and and so anyway, so with that, uh, I'll start with my first slide uh, this evening on here. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, uh, Shane. So uh, just wanted to start with uh, the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee. Uh, this I wanted to uh, share this uh, opportunity out to the public. Uh, we uh, are in need business services who oversees the bond oversight committee, and certainly some of our board members have served uh, in this role. It's a great opportunity uh, to our members uh, of the community to serve on our Measure G Citizens Oversight uh, Committee. I've uh, had the privilege of. Uh, being on that committee was led facilitated by uh, Owen Chang, uh, Director Chang, and it's a it's a really great committee to be part of because uh, we talk about the wonderful facility projects. As you can see, everything that's been accomplished, uh, and so that's a requirement uh, that we need to um, because of Prop Thirty Nine. So just to give you some information uh, to anybody's out there who's interested. Uh, being part of this committee, the committee meets quarterly and reviews facility projects and expenditures for the implementation of the Measure G School Facilities, facilities Bond Program. Uh, and so, uh, initial appointments uh, will be appointed uh, for uh, to serve a term of uh, two uh, years, commencing uh, on the date of the appointment by the board. So, the board uh, will appoint the member. Uh, through uh, a process at a board meeting. So uh, if anyone's interested in serving, please reach out to my office uh, or the facilities department uh, for more information. Again, uh, I promise you that you will really enjoy uh, being part of this committee. Uh, and so we need um, some folks to, to join that committee. I think we're running a little bit short, so uh, uh, we need uh, people to, to join us. Thank you for that. 
So the next slide, please. And so uh, I just wanted uh, just, uh, you know, since our, our uh, focus this year and theme is really about wellness and our social emotional learning. And I just wanted to highlight uh, Cooley Ranch Kindness Club. Uh, and uh, this uh, is a virtual social lunch gathering where kids get to be kids. And uh, every, every meeting uh, begins with a silly dance, then a fun activity or an interactive game without using a computer. Uh, Nina Torres, who uh, runs these, uh, sh showed me a video and it was just so uh, wonderful, beautiful because of the kids who were dancing. And I've asked her to invite me to be part of it so I can get up and be silly myself and, <laughs> and dance with the little ones. But it, if, if you need, um, uh, you know, to your heart to to just uh, feel good and smile. Uh, uh, this is a, a really awesome um, thing that's happening across the district. So I wanted to highlight. Uh, so this the the mean is ended with what's called an act of kindness, and don't we need that more than ever? Uh, and so the news is spread through Google Classroom and encourages acts of kindness throughout the week. Uh, so it's open to all students, and and we recently had 70 students participate. So just thank you for everybody who's participating in this. Again, it goes with our theme of uh, social, emotional uh, wellness and learning. Uh, so thank you, uh, and I promise that I'm going to uh, make it an effort to show up at the next one because it, it just looks like a wonderful uh, uh, event and uh, opportunity. Uh, I'm also the next slide, please, Shane. So again, so I'm really excited about this to uh, just highlight our. Uh, this is our virtual professional development slash learning uh, opportunities for our uh, teachers, our administrators, our employees. It's called uh, uh, CGSD Connect. Uh, it's a phenomenal platform that is self-directed for professional uh, learning. Uh, and, and, you know, that's a big focus for our district is that professional learning piece and our team uh, in our ed services department, our uh, ed services TOAs, uh, technology TOAs, they, they, they're doing an incredible job of putting this together. So it's available anytime and anywhere brought together by collaboration uh, or a collaborative effort rather for the different departments uh, here uh, in our district. And it's in the wonderful thing, it's available to all CJSD staff. So you can get on there and, and make connections. Um, so there's many, many offer, opportunities to learn. Um, there are short bite uh, activities that, that really support uh, uh, the, the things that we're, we're doing here in the district. And so uh, there's different levels. And after you uh, pass a level, you actually, uh, after completing several activities, you get you pass a level and you get a badge. Uh, and so it's, it's really awesome. I've been on there. Uh, and so I'm, I'm asking uh, all of you to join me in this opportunity to uh, learn about the district. And I've uh, just completed level one commence. And so I'm really excited about that. And so uh, again, staff can complete activities with missions like G Suite, Pedagogy, classroom tools, uh, ELD, student services, and a lot more that we have on there. So uh, I know that I'm beating a lot of you out there, so I challenge some of you to step up your game, Rick, <laughs> and get up there and, and join me in this challenge. He's like, what, what are you talking about, Frank? Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, as you recall, uh, before we went into COVID, I started our community meetings. Uh, I wanted to get out to the community, and I was fortunate enough to get out there to a, a couple of the, uh, you know, Colton High School. I went, I was out there, and then Grand Terrace High School. And so, because of COVID, uh, you know, we we got into, we had to pivot. Uh, so, obviously, everything's virtual. But I'm excited that uh, this month I will be hosting two community meetings, one in English and in Spanish. I'm fortunate to be bilingual, so I will uh, conduct the second one in Spanish. Uh, so uh, the community meetings are an opportunity for me to present uh, the state of the district to uh, communicate with our parents, our community members. Uh, we're gonna have staff participate, uh, fill questions from the community, 
and I'll be sending out more more details. Uh, so I want to get uh, out there virtually and and uh, get to get to meet a lot of you out there. So I, I want to continue with that. And then the last thing that I want to talk about tonight is um, just to, again a thank you. Um, you know, again, a theme CGSD cares. Uh, you know, I'm proud to be a part of a district that uh, really values uh, the safety, the emotional, uh, you know, of our employees, our students, our community. We really do care about all of you. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we've been in this virtual environment for, for a while now. I mean, eight months. I mean, it's been it's been a while. Uh, I just want to extend again my heartfelt uh, just uh, thank you to all of the staff, the teachers, uh, just uh, you guys are doing amazing things out there. I know it's not perfect, but we don't want perfection. We want perseverance. We will get there. It's going to be okay. Uh, and I'm just proud of everything that's going on. And uh, just uh, I'll end with that. Thank you, board president. I'll turn it back over to you. Sorry, Pat, you're muted again. I'd, I'd like to see uh, Dr. Miranda, thank you very much. And when you do that dancing with the kids, we'd like to see that video too. Um, moving on to our board member comments, board member Ibarra. <clears throat> board member Ibarra. Can you hear me, Shane? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, his mic is not muted, but he's not uh, he's not coming through right now. Okay. I could check in with him. Uh, okay, Hutch. I'll go on to another board member, okay. and then we'll, we'll come back. A board member, Thorin Ojeda. Pat. Board member, <laughs> Thorin Ojeda? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Okay. We're ready for um, your board member comments. I'll start by... I. I heard loud and clear from the special ed teacher who shared her solution on needing more help with uh, solutions to barriers of attendance. I'm hearing a lot about um, the engagement records and how much time, how time consuming they are. And I know that we're required to do those. Um, I am concerned that if we're taking uh, additional time to put the onus of, of um, finding out students who are not there for teachers to call and call and call, you know, um, I know that's going into a lot of personal time for teachers away from you know her their assigned day, but I also think that we're not putting. I don't know. I don't know the status of that, but I was. I'm hoping that we can figure out a way, and I don't have a solution, but a way that we can have more participation by other individuals to help find out what what it is that we are. That's keeping kids or parent kids from signing on and, and giving the help we need to parents, but making sure that we're, we're not just taking an excuse and then moving on and, and letting it continue over and over and over so that kids are missing weeks and weeks of instruction. So I can say I'm, it's, it's a really t tough situation, but I think that we need to see <laughs> teachers and give them the time that they need to do their planning, less time to have to follow up on kids time after time and uh, getting nowhere. So. If we could help out and figure that out, um, I wish we had a <clears throat> special way to do that, but I know it's really frustrating, but uh, I hope that we can work with them, work with for a better solution than what we have right now. The, I was grateful for the presentation, um, Mr. Jensen, for um, to understand where we are and um, why we can't do certain things when we want to, and, and it just has been very frustrating for people, especially those that want to go do in-classroom instruction. I understand that um, when the materials are all there, but it's nice to hear why and the, uh, the reality of the COVID-19 and what we have to do to keep everyone safe and be so cautious. So thank you. I really, tonight's presentation made that come alive a lot more to me and understand it better. So. I appreciate the sensitivity that 
the uh, cabinet and superintendent and cabinet and, and those that are making these decisions are showing towards our families and to our staff, even though it's frustrating for everyone, I really do appreciate. And I know it's because they're trying to be so sensitive and safe. And I too want to see the dancing with kids. I think that would be really, really fun. Um, I'd also, when you have the virtual community meetings, I would appreciate having that put on our calendar. So maybe we could join in and, and listen to those. And um, absolutely, the CJUSD Connect. Um, I'd like to know how to that we might be able to go in and look at some of that as well. I think that'd be great. And my final thing is tonight to all of our awardees that we had for employee recognition. We have so many wonderful people working for us. We certainly appreciate every, each and every one of them. But to be recognized by the entire as a representative for your division, your um classified certificate or community or management um it's quite an honor and i applaud those this month especially our nutrition department as a whole they have been working so tirelessly to get food to our families and what greater service can happen right now than to help those families who really are struggling um just to feed their kids so i appreciate everyone i congratulate everyone who uh, was given the recognition tonight and all I have to say from there is be safe everybody and eventually we'll get back to school I hope thank you board member Thoring Ojeda board member Ibarra thank you Pat I'm back um just want to say that uh you know first of all I think this was a uh, an incredible meeting uh, you know I think that uh at least for myself, I've learned a lot about what's going on in the district in the sense that there are so many individuals out there providing excellent service above and beyond uh, our students providing the creativity uh, in, in ways that uh, we have never had to do before, but to reach out to all the other students in every uh, uh, high school and with throughout the whole district, I think it, it's just amazing what they've been able to do. Our staff, though I know nothing is perfect and there's still some struggles out there, are giving their high percentage in trying to make this distant learning work. And just like what Joanne says, I hope that soon we'll be able to bring everyone back, hopefully. and. With our administration, uh, they've done an incredible job uh, under the conditions and the situations where they've had to adapt, change direction, uh, take a look at making a, a new uh, programs and new uh, educational, uh, uh, change the educational system to kind of fit what we're going through right now. It, it, it's it's incredible, and I just take my hat off to all these individuals who are out there, from the superintendent, assistant subs, directors, uh, uh, principals, vice principals, teachers, classified, uh, all the wonderful students out there who are making Cohen Joint Unified School uh, District go. Um, it's it's just amazing. Like I said. I just also want to take an opportunity to thank all the parents. If there are any out there looking for their efforts, for their cooperation, for their patience, for their understanding. Um, this has not been easy by any means. But as you take a look at some of the things that we have been able to accomplish. Throughout uh, this period of time, very short period of time, really. Relatively. Uh, I think we've done an excellent job. So um, just want to leave with that note. Uh, I'm hoping like everybody hopes that uh, the the report we, we received is indicative of what's coming down the road. And if everything goes well, we'll be able to implement that. Thank uh, Mr. Jensen uh, for delivering that report and all those who assist him in putting that together. And uh, I know that uh, we as individual school board members in our own every, every, in our own way have 
been out there encouraging people. I, I know that each and every one of us have heard the question, you know, when are we going to open the schools? And I know that because we are all professionals, you know, we, we've given them encouragement, we've given them hope, and we've given them transparency in, in a way that uh, I believe that our communities will be comfortable when we get to the point knowing that uh, Cone Joint Unified will do it in a safe and responsible manner. And with that, uh, we'll be able to move forward, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, once again, just want to thank everyone. It's incredible the the AP scores, how so many students, 151 students, can accomplish so much under these conditions. This just takes a, my hat off to the students, their parents the educators, the teachers, everyone involved. So that's just wonderful. So with that, Pat, uh, I just want to wish everyone well, continue staying safe, and, and uh, we'll see you uh, hopefully soon. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to board member Aragin. Thank you. Yeah, again, uh, thank you. I want to say thank you to the whole, to our whole district, the whole staff, but especially to a group of, of our um, heroes. I want to send a heartfelt appreciation to our principals out there. We have a very, very dedicated um, principals who a few months ago had no idea what, that their job was going to be look was going to look like this and. They have um, actually gone over and above what they need to do to make sure that things run as smooth, smoothly as they can at their school sites. You know, they are our educational visionaries. They're our leaders, our instructional leaders. And uh, we're asking them to be disciplinarians and uh, assessment experts. And, um, and on top of that, they, they are warriors and, and they're great cheerleaders. Um, they support their staffs in every way. So I just, um, th that's my message tonight is for our school Amen. principals. Uh, thank you so much for all the hard work that you do day after day, yeah. knowing that you have to be strong and, and move forward. And again, being a cheerleader and then going home exhausted and, uh, you know, and you know, we understand you have your families and, uh, your lives too. So please take care of that as well. But um, that's what I want to end with. I want to thank our, our school principals. Thank you, Board Member Aragin. Board Member Flores. No comment tonight for President Haro. Just want to thank everybody for the good work that's being done. And again, challenging times, but um, as long as we continue to work together, I think we'll um, find ourselves in the position to hopefully open schools safely and try to bring a little bit of normalcy back to the district. So I thank everybody for the hard work. Thank you, Board Member Flores. Board Member Sandoval? No comment today. I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> um, I just have a couple of comments. I want to I wanna thank uh, Mr. Jensen for his comprehensive presentation this evening on how we're going to move forward at least for now, obviously continuing with distance learning, but bringing teachers back into the classroom to vote only those who want to come. I want to keep reiterating that who want to come back into the classroom to teach as well as staff uh, to to help our teachers and, and uh, staff to in the offices to help um, at the district office and at their sites. So I really want to say thank you for that. Uh, presentation. Um, I want to ask some questions in regards to um, a teacher help. Um, I know we keep bringing up that we need to help our teachers as much as possible. Um, they're doing, you know, we're doing Herculean, Herculean uh, efforts to teach our students and working from home. And, and, and in some cases, they have their own students their own children that they have to also work with. 
and you know we, we keep saying as a board and as a district that we want to help them so um i know that we're having you know we don't have all our students who are, are logging in i i really want to know what we're doing and to help our teachers to be able to get a hold of these students are are do they have access or can they get access uh, to phone numbers for these students? Uh, you know, what other way? I mean, because sometimes contacting with an email just doesn't do it. And I'm not saying that every teacher is going to do this, but we need to give them as much information that that we can give them. You know, email, phone number, contacts, the 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 whatever information we can um, for the students that they have in their classroom. Um, and I and I hope that it is something I, I would think it's something that IT could do for them. Um, <clears throat> and I'd like to get some information about how we can help them because, uh, you know, I don't want them to feel like they're being, um, you know, frustrated or blocked from helping out their students more than they, you know, more than they, they want to do the work and they want to help these students. And it has to be frustrating when you have a classroom and not all the students are, are coming and, and you don't have a way, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to get a hold of these students um, or even more than one way to get a hold of a student. Um, the second uh, question I have is, uh, Mr. Ibarra, when we were discussing distance learning and, and having to go this route, had brought up and we all can just uh, uh, totally agreed with the idea of having homework help and having this this program that where students could either talk to a teacher or talk to an assistant, uh, um, not assistant, a substitute teacher, or um, and get help with their work. And um, I, I, I'd like to know how that program is doing, but I'd also like to know, um, you know, I I think that. This idea, I don't know of a lot of districts that are doing this, this type of a program, this homework help uh, where they can, where they can call, where they can uh, email in or, or go online and, and talk to somebody through WebEx or however we're doing it. And I think it's a wonderful program and I think it's, it's, it's a program much like how we have our, our academies for our administrators and all these different things. I think this is a top notch program that we can we can grow on even after COVID is over. Because when students leave school and then you know they have problems with their homework, if they have somebody that they can log on and talk to or email and get an answer or talk to, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I, I wanna know how are we reaching these students to let them know that this help is available. Um, how are we reaching the parents and letting them know that this is available? You know, I know that, you know, we have the usual outlets. We use social media. We have, you know, class dojo or we have whatever it is that we're using. I, I know that um, it's something that I really, I, I really want to see this work for our students. So I want to know how many students we have are taking advantage of it, because I think that'll tell us if it's working or not. And if it's not, that doesn't mean that students don't need help. That doesn't mean that kids, you know, uh, they still need that help, but maybe they don't know about the program and we need to do whatever we can so that they do know about it. So I'd like to find out how are we promoting this program? I, I know also Think Together was helping with us too. So I'd like to just kind of get, um, to, to get more information on how we are helping students know about this program and parents. And, um, and then, then once we get it in board correspondence, then um, I'll have more questions about it. But at least this way, it'll give me um an, an idea of what it is we are doing so i just want to um also close with uh 
as always, to just say thank you to all of our staff. Um, I know uh, we all know we're all going through this uh, COVID-19 and we all are uh, feeling the effects of it. And, and again, I say our teachers even more because of them having to do their distance learning with their students and the frustrations they're feeling. And I want them to know that they are truly valued for what they do on a daily basis. It is National Principals Month. So I also want to reach out and let all of our principals know at our sites how valued they are in this journey we call distance learning. Um, and, and I wanted to just make sure that, um, that they all knew that. So with that, we are adjourning into closed session to discuss the items listed on the closed session agenda. Excuse me, can we please switch interpreters? Yes, I, well, we're actually done. So hold on, if you could hold on just a second, please. Sure. Joanna, we're good to release the interpreters. Yes, Shane, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate your service this evening. All right. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.
We're back, Joanne, obviously. I apologize. I had a hard time when I went in to start the meeting, it wasn't doing anything. I thought, oh gosh, so I had to click out and I went back in and I went in. All of you were already in there already. So I apologize. And I was like, and I was going to text out it said to end the whole session. I was like, I just want to leave. So I apologize for that. I thought oh, no, everybody was waiting on me and everybody was already in there. No, I, I was able to start the meeting. Okay. So that's good. So yeah, we'll just. Mm -hmm. Just because, okay. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened to everybody else. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm here. All oh. right, hey, Frank, uh, we're still waiting for Pat. Oh, there she is. Hey, Pat. Miss Sandoval, are you on? Mrs. Mm. Harrell, can you hear us? Sandoval. Oh, thank you, Ms. Sandoval. And I think, Ms. Ottigan, are you on the phone? She was having some problems with... Uh, no, we don't have any call-in users. Okay. Mrs. Harlow, you're still muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, it sounds like a commercial. Item 10.0 or public session. Uh, just one second, Ms. Harrow. I okay. have Mr. Ibarra here. I have Mr. Flores here, Ms. Harrow, and Ms. Sandor. We have We do have four. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm here. Thank you. Ms. Hattigan's here there. Is here too. Or on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're ready. Okay. Moving on. The board is back from closed session. Item 10.1, our personnel public employee appointment, discipline, dismissal, release, government code 54957. On a motion by board member Ibarra and seconded by board member Thoring Ojeda and on a 6-0 vote, the board approved the following. Certificated regular staff 11, elementary teacher temporary, Bernie, elementary teacher Temp Grimes, elementary teacher Temp Lewis, elementary teacher Temp Lincoln, elementary teacher Temp Rogers, two, elementary teacher Temp Wilson, three, information and communication technologies teacher, Bloomington High School, music teacher, Joe Baca Middle School, one volunteer. And with that, that ends our board meeting and we are adjourned. Thank you everyone for your time this evening. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Take care, stay safe. Bye everybody. Good night, thank you. Good night. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Ms. Dr. Meadows. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night, all. Good. Bye, Missy. <laughs> Bye, thank you. All right, enjoy your evening, everybody.